Hi, everybody. I, I saw that there were people that were signing up and I'm here, but I just realized my chat box thing disappeared. I just, just when I think I'm learning all this and I know what I'm doing, hold on. Let me see what's going on here. I may have to call Carly. We have one minute away from the start, everybody. I've got great samples to show you. I've got great topics. I have a neat new thing, but let me see what I did. Oh, here we go. I don't know what happened. Okay, so I've got seven participants. Hey, everybody. Okay, so I've got you up over here so I can see um, how many attendees we have. And then I also have a chat box. I'm gonna put the chat box up too. There, there the chat box. So if you type in, I can see your questions and I'll be able to answer them. And um, now it's one o'clock. So now I can say welcome everybody uh, to this week's Garden Coach at Shally Nursery and um, Garden Center. And we're doing something uh, we keep improving. We keep doing things better and better and better. And we love your feedback. We love your feedback. That's what's helping us get better and better and better. And what we decided to do uh, this week is that I have all my notes right here. And look, front and back. And so everyone that has signed up, pre-registered, um, um, our, our back office wonderful people will send you the copy of the notes. So you don't have to worry about breaking your wrist to take notes because you'll get this, 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 um, this, my outline of what we're just, what I'm discussing today. And I just had one question, you know, in advance and I'll do, I'll, I'll take care of that. And, uh, but we're going to do what I, I started doing a couple weeks ago where I'm talking about the things we're seeing in the plant information center, that's the converted nursery office where you come to the back windows to drop your samples off. And if I need to, I get to run back to the microscope and look at the samples in the microscope. But we're doing pretty well. We've got a, we've got a team of people um, answering questions out there and it's working. I think it's working really well. I'm, I'm, really, I'm really happy with it. So, um, so we'll go ahead and let me see. I've got, um, I still have seven attendees, eight attendees. And, um, and so welcome, welcome, welcome to the Garden Coach for this is July 9th. Can you believe it's July already? Woo. So with this heat, now I'm gonna go ahead and start out. Uh, this is the fourth week, the fourth week, actually in a row where when I'm starting out this discussion with, with you all, that it, it, it's, it, I'm saying these same words over and over and over again, uh, since it's going to be so hot, you know, and it will again this week. And then I, I did a, a recording with Tracy Butler this morning for her Facebook page. And she was talking about how next week, the end of the week is going to be even hotter than it is this week. I'm sorry to tell you that. Ugh, I hate that myself. I can't believe it. I went to high school in Houston, Texas. And this is what the weather was like down there all the time. You know, you, I, we'd, we'd wake up in the morning and walk to the, you know, to the breakfast room and all the windows were fogged on the outside from so much humidity outside and the windows being cold from having the air conditioning run on the inside. It was always fogged up like that. Sort of like what we deal with in the winter when we have so much humidity in the house and it's fogging up on the, and so, so I can't believe that I'm so uncomfortable with the weather the way it is right now. I think we all are. But, um, but again, this is the fourth week in a row where I'm telling people water, water, water. And, you, and this is including all of the landscape plants right now. Um, I was more emphatic about newly planted plants. I had to really be careful with the newly planted plants in the last couple of weeks. But man, now it's every plant in your landscape. You know, you've got to get those sprinklers out and really water. And the best thing, if you can water early in the day, so that they're hydrated, the plants are hydrated before they go into all this heat. That's so much better than coming home from work and seeing them all flagging. That's the horticulture term for wilting. And, you know, they're all flagging and, and having to water them so they, they catch up. Try to get them prepared and hydrated before they go into a hot, hot day. Okay, now one thing though, as uncomfortable as it is for us humans to have all this humidity, it is actually um, um, a saving grace 
for our plants. With all the, well, all the moisture in the air, uh, it slows the transpiration rate down for the plants. And the way that, you know, transpiration, that's like we, we humans perspire, but plants transpire. They have the pores in their leaves are called stomates, and they open up. Most of them are on the underneath side of the leaf. Some are on the upper side. And when it's hot like this, the stomates open up, and then, and then it's the dry air on the outside of the leaf that helps, helps pull the, you know, with, you know, with osmotic pressure, pull the water up through the plant. So when it's real humid, uh, you know, uh, you know, out here, it, it, you know, it doesn't, the plants don't as transpire as quickly. That can be a problem because they don't cool off as quickly either. So the only plants that I, I can really tell you that just hate, hate, hate the heat and really benefit from being um, syringed with water, like late on a hot afternoon like this, are um, the, 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 the Canada hemlock or the Canadian hemlocks, they hate it when the temperatures go over 85. They stop doing anything metabolically, but you can really help them out by just hosing them off and letting that water evaporate and that evaporation process cools them down. So that's, you know, that's, that, that's a real thing. But when it's this humid, it doesn't, it, it, you know, there's not as much evaporation as, as normal, but, but again, it is a saving grace to have it high, high humidity like this, rather than high winds and high temperatures. And then that really increases the transpiration and can cause plants to go into stress much more quickly. So there is a blessing, even though, you know, I know I, I hate all this humidity. Okay, um, now again, water the plants at least once a day right now. And it, it, I'm kind of going against all my advice about saying only water every other day because you don't want to displace the oxygen in the soils. Right now, you need to water every day to keep those plants from, 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 from actually, it, it, this could be a, a life or death situation, you know, with, you know, with, you know, with our plants. Um, if you rely on a sprinkler system, uh, really be sure that you know exactly how much water is being delivered by each of the heads. And that means putting a rain gauge up in the path of the sprinkler head and then um, going and check to see how much water is in the gauge. Or if you don't have rain gauges, just use empty cat, cat food cans or empty tuna cans. And, and then you know check to see how much water was being delivered. Ideally, you want a half inch of water to be in, in the rain gauge or that can or the tuna can um, after the, the sprinkler runs. And you wanna do that three times during the week. Now that's, I've said this over and over and over, the rule of thumb at 75 degrees or cooler, then uh, the plants, our gardens need an, you know, an inch of rain or the equivalent of supplemental water, water from a sprinkler um, or handheld. And you know, for every 10 degrees above 75, you have to, another half inch is required. So these 90 degree days, these 95 degree days, we should be getting two inches of water a week and we're not getting it. So make sure you're giving that as a supplement for, you know, for, for, the, for our plants. Uh, the other thing I wanted to emphasize, oh, excuse me, I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> Pardon me, is um, water the soil, not the plants. And a lot of times when you're using a sprinkler system, that's not the case because it, it just hits the leaves. So that's why you want to measure to see how much is actually getting down into the soil level. If you're hand watering, it's a lot easier because you use a watering wand that extends down, put the, the, put the, the shower head right over the soil. And then you know, and then you you know the water is going right into the soil and directly into the roots. Plants don't absorb water through the leaves. You know, oh, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze again. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Another problem with high humidity is all the all the mold spores in the air. When you're allergic to molds, it's terrible. Okay, so now um, I'm back to watering the roots. You know, not you know, not you know, not not the leaves of the plant. So you'll get that get that that water right into the root system, so it can go back up. Now, the things to watch out for in your garden and things 
that you might see that I don't want you to be worried about. So that, this is a fun part, the fun part of being a garden coach. Okay, now as it gets hotter and hotter and hotter, I'm seeing that the, the, the fungal leaf spot diseases are appearing almost overnight. So if the plant has the disease and it hasn't shown up, with these high temperatures, all of a sudden the spots just almost appear overnight and people are panicked by that. And this is a good example. This is anthracnose on Boston Ivy. Okay, see all those, see all those leaf spots? And, 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 but that, now I'm gonna show you the backside. Usually the, the, when you're a pathologist, you look at the backside under the microscope and you look for the sporulation patterns one advantage of this high, high heat is it's just, it's cooking the, the fungus. So it's not resporulating. So we're not seeing secondary reinfection, which is really one of the benefits. And there is a benefit to this. We're not seeing this disease go on and on and on and on, like we would if we were having cool nights and real moist, you know, in high dew points. So, so that, but now this on, on, on Boston Ivy, it doesn't go into the wood. And so it's like acne. I've talked about this before. It's like acne on a teenager. It's not going to kill the plant. It just looks really bad, but it makes you remember next year when the leaves are coming out, spray with this systemic fungicide to protect them. So when the spore is released, when the temperatures, the air temperatures are between 55 and 65, that's when the spore wakes up and the, the fungus wakes up and it releases it and it's wind blown, blows through the air and lands on the leaves. It, the, the term when it inoculates the leaves, it grows into the leaf and inoculates it. And then it takes six to eight weeks for the lesions to develop. So that's why this got inoculated two months ago. And then all of a sudden with this hot, hot temperatures, it shows up. Seeing, I'm, I've been getting 10 of these a day from different people, all, you know, all coming in. So, so, so that, and then anthracnose, because we had that wet, wet, wet May, and with, you know, w w cool temperatures first, then warm temperatures, the anthracnose, anything in our landscape that could get anthracnose, got it. And I've said that over and over and over, and it's all showing up. There's, there are a lot of other uh, fungal leaf spot diseases, um, things like um, horse chestnut and the chestnut trees, they have one called, you called it's called Guignardia, and, and it looks horrible. But it's the same thing. It's just in the leaves. It doesn't go in the wood. And, you know, and, and a large, large tree that's like 75 feet to 100 feet, it's not worth trying to spray it. They've lived with this disease forever and ever and ever. It's not going to kill them. It just kind of happens. So, so just I'm making you feel better that you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, okay, now um, slugs, slugs have awakened because it finally warmed up and because it's so humid, they're eating everything that's close to the ground. Number one, the first one is hosta. I didn't bring any gooey hosta samples in, but hosta. And then, you know, then the heucheras or the coral bells, they're being eaten alive. And the problem with the, um, the slugs is they're the buddies they hang around with, the pill bugs or the sow bugs, they'll actually, if the populations are high enough, they'll actually eat the crown out of, out of coral bells. So watch, watch out for that you know, in, in your gardens right now. Sluggo will take care of the slugs. If you get sluggo plus, it takes care of the insects that the slugs hang out with. And so you just sprinkle one teaspoon, don't use a lot, one teaspoon every three square feet and do that every two weeks and that will really take care of it. And it works, it works immediately because the slugs are so attracted to those pellets, they eat it and then, and then it kills their appetite. And so the damage on your, on your plant stops almost overnight. I love this stuff, I love this stuff. Now, okay, oh, this is horrible news. I talked about earlier the, um, the larva of the viburnum leaf beetle and how they came out at the end of May and early June, and they're small. They, you know, they, they're they're not they're not even as big as the the white section of my fingernail right there. And they feed voraciously. They can strip a plant of all the leaves, eating everything except the veins of the leaves, in in three to five days. And then when they finish eating, they drop to the ground and then pupate. 
and I, we talked about that earlier, and treating all your viburnums with a systemic insecticide, either a spray or a drench, in preparation of the adults. The adults um, actually stay as a pupa in the soil underneath the shrubs for usually it's six to eight weeks. So I was predicting that they were gonna be coming out at the end of July and the first week of August. I am horrified to tell you that I have had three, three, I have two fingers, three samples come in just yesterday of the, the, the adult beetles. So with all this heat, their life cycle and their pupa stage really advanced. So if you have not used a drench on your viburnums, be prepared to use um, a hose and sprayer to spray them because it's more critical, I think, well, and that's a, it, it's not really more critical to kill the, the adults than the larva, but the, the adults will do the feeding damage and then they will also mate and then lay eggs on the brand new tips of the viburnums. And then that carries it on so that you have the, the larva for next spring. So yeah, it, it is more critical to get rid of these adults. And they're small, they're really small. If you didn't know what you were looking for and you didn't see them actually eating, you wouldn't know what they look like. They're kind of a pale yellowish brown. And I'm, I'm not exaggerating when I say small, they're, they're probably a quarter of an inch, not even. Yeah, they're, they're probably three eighths of an inch. Well, that three inches is more than a quarter. No, a quarter is four, four eighths. Oh man, it, it, fractions. Anyway, they're very, very small, but they're they have they have the antennas on them, so that you know they're just creepy to look at. So that doesn't sound like my scientific self, does it? That's how much I hate these insects. So beware, beware, beware about um, you know about the uh, the adult uh, you know leaf beetle. It's called the viburnum leaf beetles. Okay, be be prepared, be prepared. Okay, um, okay now. Um, Oh, in the, in the vegetable garden, we're seeing lots of cabbage looper and they're eating all the kale and all the spinach and, and, and the lettuces. So be on the lookout for those using, using the, the, uh, the earth friendly natural tomato and vegetable spray from Bonide. It's got a sulfur base to protect against all the fungal problems. And then it has that organically derived, um, uh, an insecticide from organically grown daisy plant. And what's great about it, you, sp you know, spray at dusk and, and so you're not gonna kill any pollinators. It kills the insects that are there, those larvae that are eating all the leaves, kills those. And then the next day when the sun shines on it, it breaks the residue down so you don't have any residue that you're dealing with on, on, you know, on, on them. And, and you can wash it off and eat it. So you spray one day and harvest 24 hours later. So it's, it, it's, really, it's, it's really good. Now, lots and lots and lots of Japanese beetles are being reported and brought in to the to the the, the plant the plant information clinic. So be on the lookout for Japanese beetles. They they love anything anything in the uh, the rose family. So roses, um, uh, crab apples, um, um, lindens, um, um, service berries. So really be, oh, grapes, grapes, they devour grapes. So really be, oh, guess what I noticed? I have strawberries in hanging baskets and uh, the Japanese beetles were attacking, eating my strawberry leaves. Ugh. And unfortunately it's up in a hanging basket. So this heat has stopped the flowering and stopped the fruit production, but it's an ever bearing strawberry. So as soon as the temperatures go back down, oh, touch wood, touch wood, uh, let's pray for the temperatures go down. I'll have strawberries again at the end of the season. It's a great strawberry called TriStar. So watch for that whenever you're looking for strawberries. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of move and oh, all right, this is something. Okay, what to do in the garden right now. So now July, is 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 the time to do another application of the uh, the rose and flower care from BioAdvanced. You, you, the first one is April 15. It lasts six weeks. The second one is June 1st, and then the last application is July 15. So put that on your radar. Uh, I'll be talking next. Wait, no, next. Oh, next Wednesday. 
wait, wait, look at the thing. Next Wednesday is going to be um, July 16th. Yeah, next Wednesday will be July, and July 16th. So the 15th is when, you know, is when you want to get that application in. Um, now, okay, let me flip this over. And um, the other thing is I'm, we're seeing lots and lots of magnolia scale because they're so um, obvious now because or you know, they're so apparent because they're laying their eggs and so instead of just being a, a, a brown bump on the branches that's hard to see they have all this white stuff kind of it's not gooey it's just emerging out from underneath the brown scale covering so all of a sudden it looks really obvious with white you know on it and so so those are the eggs that are going to hatch later so you know so so you know you make sure make sure you've treated your magnolia with the annual drench the, the, the 12 month annual drench because you want to make sure you get rid of those magnolia scale it can really really you know be a, a, a real disadvantage to a, a, a magnolia tree when you have these high temperatures and no rain and you have all those scale insects sucking the water out of the plant when the plant's trying to use the water so make sure you you know you get that protected now um, you want to keep removing the weeds by hand through you know from your vegetable gardens and your flower gardens uh, any weeds that are in the lawn still you're going to have to bite the bullet and, and 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 admit that you missed the window of opportunity and what that means is on every label of all the weed killers it tells you to not use the product if the temperature is going to go over 85 or the, the temperature could go over 85 in the next 30 days and i have a perfect example about why you really want to follow that you know that you know that advice and this is an example of a rhododendron and i'm going to show you a single leaf and then show you what happened the the, the sample came in and see how that leaf is all twisted look at that it's all twisted and and when you feel it when you feel it it feels like plastic it's that hard and what caused this is uh, 2,4-D which is a type of herbicide that's in um, the weed and feeds the granular weed and feeds and also the liquid you know weed and feeds and what happens is um, that's an amine chemical a-m-i-n-e they're amines and and they're very volatile at high temperatures they're designed to stay in the soil of the lawn for 30 days so it, it keeps killing the weeds and you know for those 30 days but it's still there and if the temperature goes above 85 those those chemicals volatilize float up in the air and then wherever the wind is they drift in to actively growing plants this was a rhododendron that was in a, a, a garden in a, a bed next to a lawn and you can see look at all look at all those twisted leaves the first sample i showed you came off of this sample as well see them all twisted now that's the bad news the bad news is this was a one-time shop these were the actively growing leaves back then it was probably about four weeks ago and because we had such rainy conditions at the end of may people couldn't get the homeowners and services couldn't get the weed killers down so they didn't get to put down until the first couple weeks of june and then what happens we have this early heat wave and this hurly consistent heat wave and and so the the chemicals volatilized drifted in the plant but the good news is the good news is okay see the tip of the plant right here that's the tip and then look at the look at the regular leaves that have formed in the last month and they're a little twisted but not distorted like the other ones were so you can see that the plant's going to go back to normal and you know and and the, the new buds it forms will be fine so so i just wanted to you know help you feel better about that and then then if you don't want this to happen wait until august 15th between august 15th and september 15th and that's a better time to decide to kill all your weeds by using you know the herbicides or the weed killers and the reason you can't buy then is it because our landscape plants aren't actively metabolizing anymore? They're slowing down and getting ready to go dormant for the winter months, and so they're not they're not sucking the hormone in as as, as quickly as they would because they're not actively growing like that. Now, one disadvantage of having these distorted leaves on an evergreen plant is that those leaves stay there, you know, for many many years. 
So it, it would not be a problem right now to prune this off like this customer did, you know, just prune those off. And then new growth that will come, um, it, and you still, it's still early enough that you can get the new growth to, to, to come out between, you know, and you, you've done this before the 15th of July, so the flower buds haven't started forming. So the new growth will form, there'll be normal leaves because all of the fumes from the herbicide have, have already volatilized and blown away. So the new growth will be fine, and then you still have enough good time for the flower buds to form for next season. So if, you know, if something like this, this had to happen, the timing worked out, it was working out pretty, you know, pretty well. Okay, I'm making sure I showed you all my cool, all my cool samples. Oh, all right. I hate this. I hate this. Okay. These are roses and we're lots, lots and lots of people are bringing the roses in. And this, and I've talked about this every week. This is the bristly rose slug. Now the rose slug we dealt with for years and years and years, which is the regular rose slug, and it had one life cycle, and you know, and it would come out early in the spring, spring, eat the new leaves that form, and then the 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 the, the larva, the rose slug would finish eating, drop to the ground and pupate, and then stay in the ground till next year, and so so we love that, we love that, and we could live with that, and it was just using the lower leaves that got damaged. Well, their, the cousin moved into town and it's the bristly rose slug. And they have five, up to five life cycles a, a summer. So we just keep seeing this come back and come back and come back and come back. So keep treating your roses, you know, with the systemic insecticide. Uh, that's why I reminded you to do that, do the drench, you know, do that, you know, do that drench. And, um, and, and, you know, and then, and then to keep it all controlled. All right, uh, let me see, okay. Yeah, then I talked about what not to do in the garden. Don't, you know, don't spray any, you know, any herbicides. Now we're, we're getting all kinds of um, gorgeous, gorgeous plants. We're doing another Farm Truck, uh, Farm Truck Friday this Friday and it's virtual. So, you know, so you'll get the email and you'll get all the, all the, the, um, um, the, pro the, the, the promotion of the different plants and the preview of the plants that are going to be on the truck and that'll come that morning and then there's the window uh actually this time oh i should have clarified this before i went live um this time i think the sale is good through the whole weekend you know um you know friday saturday and sunday and then you pick you, you pick them up here at um at, at chalet so there's some there's some really great plants and the the things that we're getting in from the farm are just looking phenomenal we also are are, are having um you know the the farm plants uh, in in the nursery so be sure and come and take a look you know, and all the gorgeous, the, the gorgeous plants. And it's right in that center courtyard and you can come in and, oh, we're doing our tent sale. That starts this weekend also. So you get all kinds of wonderful uh, values and bargains. And, you know, Chalet does a sale the way you're supposed to do a sale. You know, we don't just bring in junk and mark it down. We actually take things that have not sold over the years and oh you know like last season or this season we mark them down to get them to turn and 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 give you a value so so watch for that watch for that great email that's going to be coming i think she's sending that out tomorrow wait what day is this this is yeah this is thursday hmm, god isn't it terrible you have to remind yourself what day it is this is thursday jennifer and um and then you know and then you know, keep, you know, you know, keep, you know, touching base to see, you know, to see what he has. So she's going to send two different emails out. So you'll be notified, you know, for, you know, for all of those things. Um, okay. Now let me check the time. It's, it's one thirty. Um, I don't have any, any questions here on, you know, on, on the board. Um, I, one thing that I, I do want to mention is a neat, neat product that can help save your containers. Now with this heat, this intense heat, our containers are really suffering. And oftentimes you're needing to water them twice a day, once in the morning and once when you get home from work or once in the evening before you sit down for dinner. And there's a neat, neat product that not a lot of people know about, the professionals do, but I love sharing people, you know, this idea. Okay, this is called Soil Moist. The brand we sell is Soil Moist. It's technically an acrylic polymer. An acrylic polymer 
actually is these granules right in here. And they look like, I'm gonna take some out so you can see what they look like. They look like little pieces of rock salt. See right here, can you see that? And oh, this is hard to do. Oh look, you can sort of see. And then I'm gonna put them back in here. Each of those particles can absorb 200 times its weight in water. When I've been doing my mad scientist experiments, I've taken a, one or two of these out of here, put them in a glass of water and let it soak up as much water as it can. Then I take it out of that glass, put it in another glass and you know soak up as much water. I've actually gotten one of these little tiny pellets to, to soak up enough water that it was, uh, it was about an inch and a half in diameter. And when these are mixed in with soil, like in our potting mixes in our containers, they hold water. And then the roots grow and they grow and grow and grow looking for moisture and pull it out of the soil. When the soil gets dry, they keep growing and then they bump up next to one of these acrylic polymers. They can pull the water out of the, out of the particle. Every time you rewater, it hydrates back up and stores more water. It can mean the difference between life and death in some of your container plants. So but you say, wait, Jennifer, I already planted my containers. How do I get this in there? Okay, what you do is take a pencil or you know, just like a, even a, a, like a, 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 a watercolor brush you know, and stick holes in the container. And usually if I have like a 10 inch container, I'll do one on the north, south, east, and west, and two or three in the center. Stick the, the pencil all the way down so you have a hole. I kind of widen it a little bit at the top. Then I sprinkle these particles in. Don't put them all the way to the top because when you do water, they absorb all that moisture and it'll come out like a volcano. But you can do that and really help the plant because the roots can grow into that and, and pull that and pull that out. Um, we have just the regular acrylic polymer. And what's important is these, this, these acrylic polymers are, are uh, potassium based. Potassium based is really, really important. These were developed for golf courses and the greens on golf courses because greens get so dry and so hot. And when this was developed down south, they would mix this in with golf course greens and it was, you know, it would help keep the, you know, the, 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 the greens more moist, you know, in, in, in the heat. And um, then it came over to the horticulture, you know, the horticulture, you know, you know, world here. And it's one of the best kept secrets that we have. They also have it with mycorrhizae added and they also have it with time release fertilizer added. And um, so you just add that as like the, the insurance policy and it helps keep the plants, you know, happier, more moistened and less drought stress through the rest of our, our these hot, hot, hot summer days. So consider that. And that's, this is the large size. This is a large size. This is $18.99. Oh, here, do the right, right way. Okay. We also have one that's, that's half this size. And so you, it, it go a lot, it, go, it goes a long, long way. You know, it really goes a long way to help to help take care of things. Um, I was going to show you a couple other um, oh, interesting, interesting samples that you know that 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 I have had. Um, lots and lots of like mildew on 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 um, the the vegetable crops. So especially on cucumbers and squash, you know, we're seeing all these all these mildews. And look. So then if you're seeing, if, if your cucumbers are looking like that, that's mildew that's, that's getting into the leaves and causing the brown spots. So again, use your, use your tomato and veg um, spray and that will, help, that will help control it. And again, water, water so the leaves aren't staying wet overnight. That's a, that's a big, you know, a big, big, a big, big help and a big, big assistance. Um, I actually planted on my day off, which was, I had, I had the 4th of July off and then Sundays and Mondays are my day off. And that Sunday I planted 24 plants that I had not had a chance to get put into the garden. And then I, I moved four other perennials, which was you know silly to do in this time of year. But 
but I had to do it. And so I got it done and I got everything watered in and, um, and, you know, so it, it, it felt really good to, it went really good to get that done. I'm hoping you all got your plants in sooner than I did. And, uh, my dad is laughing at me from heaven because I was always, I'm, I was always late getting my vegetable garden in as well. So, so I'm staying, I'm staying consistent with what I'm doing. Oh, you know, I noticed that there's some questions and answers. Now I thought I didn't I didn't put that up. Here we go. Okay, what causes boxwood leaves to turn brown in the summertime? That is a really great great question. Okay, now if the boxwood has had um, um, what we call um, uh, I'm gonna I'll just leave it up. If the boxwood has the boxwood leaf miner in it, that means the larvae are in the center of the leaves eating out the mesophyll and then and then uh, when it gets this hot and dry then you know the, the leaves that have been damaged the, the damage shows up the other thing that can cause that on boxwood is um is it, it it's called boxwood um stem canker and it's a volutella stem blight and it's a fungus that gets into the axles of the of the of the branches they have a very tight branching angle and they can get cracked in winter snows and then the fungus gets in this is the time of year with this high temperatures and very high humidity that the fungus gets into the cracks and then it can clog the vascular system and then and then usually when you see the the tan or the the the, the brown tips it was it was damaged from last year and you know and then and then all of a sudden they're browning out box would take almost nine months to 12 months for the green, green, evergreen leaves to turn brown. So I usually know to ask when they started seeing that, but you wanna use the systemic fungicide, a systemic insecticide and a fertilizer to kind of to kind of help them out. Okay, what drench should I be, you should be used for the viburnum leaf beetle? Oh, Krisha, great question. <clears throat> it's either, there's two different brands, either the bio-advanced, you know, tree and shrub 12 month insecticide and or Bonite has also a 12 month tree and shrub insecticide. We get that at a better value. So we have that one in, in the quart size, the 32 ounce size, and also a gallon size. We only carry the 32 ounce in the bio-advanced, but that's the one you wanna use the 12 month tree and shrub systemic insecticide and okay i have a lot of empty hanging baskets and plant containers and flats can these be recycled and where can i take them oh that's a good question um and uh, i love these zooms thank you thank you i know who that is um actually all the new plastic containers and um and polyurethanes are actually coated they can be recycled in um, the, 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 the municipal recycling uh, bins. Um, so I know Wilmette allows that, Skokie allows that, Evanston allows that. So you can recycle them in your own, in your own recycling um, you know, bins now. It's not, it's not restricted. Uh, they increased, you know, they, they have different numbers of plastics. They've added to all those numbers. So you can do those, you can do those at home, you know, and, 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 take, care, and take care of that. Um, one of the things I want to uh, I want to encourage you all to do is I'm going to see if I can move this. Um, watch, watch. I'm getting. I can move it. I'm going to move it to this other side. Here we go. Okay. Now the other thing I want to encourage you to do is um, uh, come and look at um, all the wonderful um, flowering shrubs we have. The summer flowering shrubs, especially the hydrangeas, are just going into their prime right now. And so, you know, and you will have to be very dedicated to keeping them well watered, but it is okay to go ahead and, you know, and do them now and, you know, get them in and, and get them in so they can get rooted. But right now when the temperatures are so high, it's just going to be keeping them well watered so the water can transpire through them. And, uh, and then once it starts cooling down, especially the evening temperatures, the roots will grow and, and get established again. Um, how are people's lawns looking? Um, I know, I know um, some of them are starting to show stress. So make sure you keep them watered well. If you're not going to water and you, get, you let them go, you know, you let them go into a dormant phase, they'll brown out. And as long as we get one half inch of rain a month, the, the grass plants will stay alive 
the crown will be green at the base, but you'll have all the all the grass blades will be will be brown. But um, you know, if we're not even getting a half inch a month, then you know, then you need to you know, and and you want to you don't want to start watering again and stop. You know, if you're going to bring a lawn out of dormancy, be prepared to keep watering once you bring it out of the dormancy. So you're watering it really well for a couple of days in a row and then just make sure you keep watering. You don't want to have it go dormant and not and go dormant and not. That will stress it out too much and you'll 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 lose you'll lose the turf. Um, now I, I was also um, I was reading a new book that I got. It's called The New Gardener. And um, and if you are going to plant something new right now, um, you want to use a technique called mucking in. And what that means is you're, you know, you've dug the hole, the, the exact depth of the root ball. And then you want to go twice as wide as what the, the root ball is. Set the plant into the hole and then start filling soil, the backfill around the base. Um, fill about a quarter of it. Fill the hole up above that soil with water and let it drain through. It's going to take a while, especially with the high clay we had, let it drain through and then add more soil and do that in quarters. So the bottom quarter, and then you know, going up to a half, then to three quarters. And then and every time you add another quarter of soil, water it so that the water goes through and the soil is, is being snug tight next to the roots and the root ball. You're not going to have any air pockets that way. And then you're also making sure you've got the whole root ball really well hydrated. And then once you give the top water in one last time, and then you, you know you've given the plant a really good start. Now, you can, you can actually go the next day without watering because you've added so much water, but then go back to watering three times a week for the first six to eight weeks. That's, that's the, the amount of time it takes for the roots to grow from the root ball, the existing root ball, into the, into the, into the new soil. So you want, you want to make sure the plant has done that, and that's over that, that, eight, you know, that six to eight week period. And just try not to ever let it get dried out because that's when it really gets, it, you can really damage the plant severely you know, you know, by, by letting it get too dry, just in the early, you know, the early stages where it's, you know, it's being watered. How many of you all have looked at the tropical plants that we've got here? It is so beautiful and we've got them all under shade cloth over in the area right behind where the nursery office always is. I get to look at that every day out of the windows of the plant information center and it is, oh, the plants are just absolutely gorgeous. And one good thing about this hot, humid weather is that it is absolutely fabulous for the tropical plants. They love it. This is, this is what they're used to. So take advantage of that and, you know, put a couple of tropicals out on your patio and pretend like you've gone away for, you know, a, a nice, a nice vacation. Oh, let me check. I, it looks like I've got another, another couple of questions here and I'm going to move this over and uh, okay. Uh, it says, and this is a comment. Thanks for the viburnum drench information. I treated earlier in this season, and so I should be good for the rest of the season. Oh, that's absolutely true. It lasts for six and for 12 months. So if you did the 12 month drench early in the season, mark your calendar on the month that you did it, and you'll know that you'll you know, just do it a, a, you know in, in the next year on that same month, and it, it will you know it stays it stays in. Now, depending on the size of the plant. You know, is how long it takes for the for the, the the insecticide to go all through the tissues. A plant that's only about three feet tall to four feet tall, you know, it's up at the top of the plant in usually five days. Um, when you have larger plants and larger trees, it can take up to four to six weeks for all that chemical to go all the way out to the ends of the branches. So be aware of that. You know, be aware of that. That was a, a great comment. Thank you. Um, okay, now. Um, as far as some of this, we're saying, I'm getting a lot of samples in of the creeping bent grass. It's, it's a weedy grass in our lawns this time of year. And because it's a warm season grass, it starts actively growing when we have the warm temperatures and it, it will tend to grow up over the, the desirable grasses. Those are the blue grasses, the perennial rye grasses, and the fescues. 
And I've had two samples come in yesterday and today uh, of, 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 of the creeping bent grass is browning out because it's so hot. And what happens is when they grow up over the existing grass, they try to send roots down in through the thatch and they're rudimentary roots anyway. And so when it's this hot, it tends, it'll tend to cause the plant to dry out. So that's when all of a sudden you have that pale green turning to a tan color and it just looks like sheets of tan. And that's when people realize, oh no, I have peep creeping bent grass. And you know, when it's on a golf course green, it's great. When it's over our lawns, it's not so good because it shades out our cool season grasses when they're trying to take it easy and stay, and stay cool. And um, it doesn't kill them they'll just go dormant. And, you know, so, so the best way to get rid of that, there's an active ingredient called mesotrione. And um, it, it came out about 15 years ago in a liquid form. And, uh, you, you know, lawn professionals are using it as a liquid, as a spray. But I think it's been five years now, the granular form was developed and it's in a, a granular weed and feed product that's out there. We sell it here at Chalet. It's the only Scott's product that we sell and it's called Scott's Step 1 for Seeding. And the active ingredient in it is, um, is mesotrione. And, and it works as a pre-emergent. It prevents weed seeds from germinating. It does not prevent any grass seed from germinating. But then what the mesotrione will do, and I love this, it actually sits on the surface of the, uh, the creeping bent grass. It gets absorbed in and it kills all the chlorophyll in the green, the green grass. And so it turns white. And so you can actually see where it's working. I love this stuff. I, I love this stuff. And it's a little hot right now. And it, because, but, but you can target on using it, um, it starting April 15th when we have cooler nights and you know and that warm warm soil temperature and you can use that as your one of your your uh, labor day fertilizers and it's, it's a very good component of fertilizer it has a high phosphorus because it's for seeding and it also has i think it's a 24 percent nitrogen so you can get a really good fertilizer as well as killing creeping bent and preventing any other weed seeds from germinating so i like to encourage people that are having problems in their turf to use that as their, their Labor Day fertilizer. And, that, and that, that means anytime from August 15th to September 15th is when you wanna use that, you know, use that product. But until then, keep the turf really, really, really well, well watered and, um, and, you know, and, and, and I was gonna say pray. <laughs> no, it's not that bad, but, you know, but keep, you know, keep, it, keep, it, keep it well watered. Um, let me see, I'm checking my time. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's 146. Anyone that, um, that logged in a little bit late, um, and I don't, there were a couple of people that, that came on afterwards. Um, I announced that, that my notes, my notes and my outline is going to be emailed to you at the email address that you, when, when you registered for the, you know, for the, um, the, the, the webinar, uh, our, our, our wonderful back office geniuses will send that to you. So you, you know, you, you'll have all your notes in front of you to kind of remind you of what, what we talked about today. So, um, so I, I guess, let me see, no more questions. No more questions are coming in. And um, I wanna thank you all. Oh, here's an, you know, those four questions and answers. Very good. And I have the chat box up over here checking that to see if there's any questions over there. Man, this is this Zoom thing is amazing, isn't it? Um, I, ha I have to tell you, uh, I've, I've learned, I'm, I'm learning, I shouldn't say I've learned, I'm still learning, I'm learning every day about Zoom. And then I'm also learning about Skype. I've been doing Skyping, I Zoom with Tracy Butler on Wednesday mornings, and then we've been Skyping. Well, we, we switched it this week. I did a live segment on Channel 11 News yesterday. You can go to their webpage and see it. Although I gotta tell you, I, I did it at 1 p.m. and I had been out in that nursery office out in the Plant Healthcare Center in, in all that 90 degree heat for uh, all morning. And 
I mean, I looked like I had, I looked like I'd been in the heat. I'm all glistening and glossy and shiny. <laughs> Not a good stage look. So, okay. When I can, well, when can, oh, here you go. When can I transplant my balloon flower? Oh, I, I'm sorry, Gail. I almost forgot about your question. And this was a question that came in early. Okay. Now the balloon flower, because it, because it goes, it just is getting ready to go into flower right now. If you would transplant it right now, you're gonna delay the bloom by four weeks. I don't think you'll miss the bloom, but usually it's considered a mid-season bloomer. So usually we like to encourage people to transplant that earlier in the spring or earlier in the summer. Um, if, if, it ha if it hasn't gone into bloom yet, um, you know, then you can go ahead and, and do the transplanting. But remember how I was talking about mucking it in whenever you transplant something this time of year, muck it in so you really get it well hydrated and you get all that soil you know up around the root system so so and be sure though if it has already started blooming hold off until it finishes blooming and do the transplant from um from august 15th to september 15th and you want to try to make sure you get it done by september 15th because you want a perennial to be able to root for six to eight weeks before the ground freezes solidly. So that target to get any transplanting done is, uh, is the 15th of September. And then, so if you go four weeks, that's, that's, that's oh, you know what? Yeah, okay, 15th of September. Um, so that's, that's October 15th and then November 15th. And usually our ground freezes solidly, you know, right, right in between the 15th of November and, and Thanksgiving, you know, on Thanksgiving. That's, I'm always running out to work off my turkey dinner on th after Thanksgiving to put down my winter mulch because it, it's good to put it down after the soil freezes solidly. And so I usually can always count on that happening on Thanksgiving weekend. So I know the ground is frozen. I get the mulch down because if you mulch too early, and this is way off topic and off season, but if you mulch too early, it'll keep the soil warmer and prevent it from freezing. And then, you know, and, and so you don't want to mulch too early in the fall, but I'll talk about that later. And coming up, I think next week, next week I'm doing a watering, the, the, it's on Tuesday. Uh, and I believe it's, oh, I should know this. I, I believe it's at 10, a, it's, it's at, it's at 10 a.m. on um, on next next Tuesday. It's next Tuesday, and on on it's called the life saving benefits and the life saving habit of watering. And so we've got all kinds of neat research talking about. I haven't done that lecture for a long, long time, so I think everyone will really enjoy that. Oh, here's another one. Um, Mine is, oh, it's blooming now. Okay, all right, so hold off until it, hold on, hold off and do that, do that transplanting in September then. Okay, oh, it's so nice to get feedback. Well, this is almost like having a regular lecture <laughs> where people can talk to me. <laughs> you know, I, you know, I, I, yeah, it's, it's really, it's really, it's really nice to get feedback while you're doing this instead of just talking nonstop the whole time. Although my husband, thinks I do this constantly anyway. I just talk nonstop and you know, no one has to answer and I, I never listen to anything he says. <laughs> so this is probably not a good habit for me to start doing. But um, hey, I, 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 let me see, it's 10 minutes till. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna say thank you to everybody and, uh, and I'll look forward to seeing you in next week's Garden Coach and next week's Watering Lecture. And then I think I'm doing, I think I'm doing three next week. I think I'm doing the watering. I'm doing the garden coach. And then I think I'm also doing, um, I think I'm also doing um, perennial maintenance. I think I'm doing three things next week. So stay tuned, watch those emails and, um, and, and, and be sure and um, do the farm truck and uh and um man we're, we're just hitting a lot of stuff at you these days aren't we keeping you busy keeping you busy in these odd these odd odd times huh so thank you all i'm gonna say goodbye and i uh, appreciate your um your 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 uh, wonderful uh loyalty to us so thank you so much for being chalet chalet customers all right bye now
Okay.